Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jordy. If you don't know me, I don't know what accent that was. I don't have that accent. Today's video is all about cream contouring. It's my favorite way to contour. I kind of did a step by step on how I personally do it. What works for me might not work for you, but there might be tips in here that you can use anyway. I was definitely influenced by Kristen. She was like, if you like cream contouring so much, then why don't you have a video about it? And I was like, damn, touche. I don't have a video about it. So here it is. I've actually got three favorite contouring products right now. One is the Fenty Matchstick in Amber, the Anastasia Contour Stick in Fawn, and the BH Cosmetics Studio Pro Cream Contour Kit. And yes, they're all cream. I very much prefer contouring with cream. I'm actually gonna swatch these two side by side because I never have. Put the Fenty one right here. And there's the Anastasia one. The Anastasia one is a little bit more creamy. It's easier to blend than the Fenty one, but the color is really, really similar. Maybe the Anastasia one is a little bit darker, but barely. In the BH palette, it's this shade that I like. So here's this one here. It's a little bit warmer. Still nice though. But out of all three, the BH Cosmetics palette is the easiest to blend. Out of those three though, the Anastasia stick is the one I always reach for. It is my number one. Let's contour, shall we? I always start with my cheeks. I don't know why, it's just where I start. What I do for my cheek is I line it up with my ear. So where my ear kind of ends right here, I just toss in a line and I stop about three fingers away from my mouth. If you find that the product dries a little bit quick and you're having a hard time blending it out, just do one thing at a time. I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna blend it out. And I like to use a brush that's very, very dense so that I have a lot of control over where I'm blending it. This is the Kat Von D foundation brush. There is a smaller version and it's actually a cream contour brush and they are my favorite brush for blending out cream contour. So I just kind of go back and forth to distribute the product. And then I pull the product up. You can leave this as sharp as you want or as blended as you want. And then I kind of come over here and blend out the edge here so there's no obvious spot where it stops. Sorry, I don't mean to flip you guys off. And you can make this wider if you want to. I like to keep mine fairly small. I like to have lots of room for blush. I like lots of room for highlight. And so I just keep it as just a little shadow. And I think that it looks quite natural. I should also mention that I already have my foundation and concealer on. I have a little bit of powder under my eyes, but I did not powder my face. If you powder your face before you contour with cream, it's gonna be really, really hard to blend. It's gonna get kind of pasty, like turn into a paste. So you wanna contour with cream and then set your face with powder. The contour always looks a little bit harsh before you do set with powder and put on blush and highlighter because you just have a line of brown on your face. Once you go over with powder and blush and highlight, this kind of blends into the rest of your face. Moving on to my jawline. If you've got a little bit of uh, this happening, this is actually caused from like facial expressions, like when you do this, it strengthens this muscle. It's just such a fun face to make. So what I do is I fake it and I sort of line it up with the rest of my jawline and kind of just make a line from my chin to where my jaw actually is. And also, I put it all under here to create a shadow on the little extra blob there to make it less noticeable. Essentially what you're doing is just giving yourself a contour chin strap. This part can be hard if you don't blend this out entirely. It really does look like you have a chin strap. So I'm just pulling it down onto my neck to create a shadow and I blend it all the way across. I don't want there to be bits and pieces where it's contoured. I want it to look like you know, a full shadow. Again, using my Kat Von D foundation brush to blend all of this out. And I like to kind of make this face and pull it up so I can make sure it's really blended because if there's a harsh line, it 
does not look good. I'm gonna do my forehead now and I'm gonna use such a small amount of product and I'm just gonna kind of pull it into my hairline first which sometimes looks really crazy because I get it in my blonde hair and then kind of with more of a stippling motion I blend it into the foundation on my forehead my forehead's really dry and I find if I try and blend it like this on my forehead it takes my foundation off and gets really flaky and then I go in also with my beauty blender and make sure it's nice and blended. You can also go in and go over all of your contour with a beauty blender, get it really nice and blended. And now we can move on to the nose. For my nose, I don't use the stick. I find that, you know, you get too much product, the lines are too thick. I like to use the stick with a brush and just pick up product off the stick. Any brush that's nice and thin, it can be an eyeshadow brush, the Kat Von D concealer brush is one of my favorites for nose contouring. Anything that's quite dense, thin, long. If it's long, it really helps you get a nice straight line. This is the Sigma Wide Shader and it's one of my favorite nose contouring brushes. So I just grab a little bit of product. Nose contouring is kind of a tricky thing because you probably, unless we have really similar nose, you won't contour your nose the same way I do. What you're doing with contouring your nose is drawing shadows and highlights to make an illusion of how you want your nose to look. I think the best way to find out the best contouring technique for your nose is to just try different things, experiment with your nose contour, definitely trial and error for this one. You're pretty much just drawing on a new nose. Starting at the front of my eyebrow, under my eyebrow, I bring a line down to about here, leaving this general area just for a sec, and I do that on both sides. And as you can see already, adding this darkness makes it look like this is where my nose descends. So it makes the bridge of my nose look much, much skinnier. I'm just going in and blending out some of the product. You can pretty much make your nose look as skinny or as wide as you want. It goes both ways. For the bottom of my nose, I like to add a shadow under my nose. This kind of gives it a push up. Whatever part is highlighted on the tip of your nose is going to become the tip of your nose. It's going to come forward because it's lighter. So I like to pretend that the tip of my nose is much higher. I just draw a little circle on the tip of my nose and uh, that becomes the tip of my nose. I also like to go across here with my contour and it just creates this like cute little button you don't have to do that you can just go straight down there's so many different ways you can contour your nose I guess it's really just finding how you like to contour your nose it actually helps quite a bit to look at noses and look at where the shadows are look at where the highlights are and then you can kind of figure out why the shadows and highlights work the way they do for your nose, you really want to make sure it's blended. You don't want someone looking at you to be like, why is there lines on your nose? I like to blend mine with a brush. And then also, especially on the outer part of the contour, I do leave this part a little sharper. Not this sharp, I'm going to blend that out a little bit. I find that I do seem to lose my highlight when I'm contouring my nose. When I'm blending it over, it gets a little bit dark in there. I like my nose contour to be a bit extra, so I like to go in with Kat Von D's White Out Concealer. And I just put a little dab right on that little faux nose tip. And down the center, like just the tiniest bit. Because anything that's lighter is going to come forward and anything that's darker is going to go back. And then I find that it's easiest just to blend this out with my finger for maximum control. Now that I'm all contoured, I gotta make sure that this stays in place. I'm gonna use the RCMA No Color Powder and my Still Damp Same Beauty Blender used for my face to apply the powder. To make this a little bit sharper, stand out a little bit, I really love to go in there with powder 
and let that bake. When you dust this away, it really makes a nice sharp, clean line. It makes this a little bit lighter and it just, it looks really good. Also powder the rest of my face. But I do add more in places that I want to be extra, extra set, like my makeup creases in my smile lines. By putting lots of powder on there and letting it sit, it's just gonna pull the moisture out of the foundation and it's gonna make it stay on much better. To kind of enhance the nose contour, I like to bake the sides of my nose. to really accentuate that contour. And just the tip of my nose. And down the center. Usually I let this bake while I do my eyebrows or my eyeshadow and I just leave it there. I already did all that. So uh, I'm just gonna chill for a sec. When it's time to dust this all off, you want to choose a very, very soft, fluffy brush because if you dust this off with a brush that's really dense, you could disrupt everything underneath the powder. My favorite brush, again, apparently I just really love Kat Von D's brushes, is the Kat Von D powder brush number 20. What I like to do when I'm dusting away the powder that is on here is kind of dust it off and over my contour. So you're not wasting any powder and you're uh, multitasking. When I'm dusting away powder, I use kind of tapping motions and a really light hand because I don't want to disrupt my makeup. Once you're all set with powder, and now it's time to highlight. I'm gonna use my current favorite highlighter, Pillow Talk by Ofra Cosmetics, and my favorite highlighting brush, the A23 from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm gonna start with my cheeks. I personally like to put highlighter on before blush because then the blush goes on top of the highlight instead of the other way around, and then you have kind of a strip of light over your blush. I place my highlight on the highest point of my cheek, which is kind of right on the apple, and I bring it up all the way to my temple, I love this highlighter, oh my god. And then on this kind of weird high point above the brow bone, and I just kind of connect the two, making a big fat backwards C. Well, on this side it's backwards, on the other side I guess it's correct. And then just using circular motions to give it a bit of a blend so it's not a stripe. If you want an insanely blinding highlight, you can spray your brush with a little bit of setting spray, or you can spray your face with setting spray and then it really sticks on there. This one's blinding on its own. It doesn't need anything. For my chin, I do like a little bit of glow on my chin, but not much, so I don't pick up any more product. And I kind of just dust on whatever's left on the brush. Same goes for my forehead pick up any product. I just want a little bit of glow, barely there. And then I'm gonna highlight my nose. You guys ask about this brush all the time. I always forget what it is and I always forget to tell you. This is the Morphe M562. I don't do a whole lot of Morphe. I feel like there's enough people pushing Morphe, but this is a really great brush for nose highlight, inner corner highlight, and eyebrow highlight. I love putting it on the tip of my nose, just like a little light bulb. Again, it just brings it forward and enhances that contour even more, makes the illusion even more intense. You can skip this if you want it to be a little bit more natural, but I will never. And then right down in the middle, just I just love that. Inner corner to brighten the eye. Under the brow to give it a lift. And then, a little bit on the upper lip, Cupid's bow. Blind thine enemies. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of makeup, blush. Since a lot of you guys asked what blush I was wearing in the last tutorial, I am gonna use that blush today. It's Mai Tai by Ofra Cosmetics. It's like this crazy highlighter coral, it's so bright. And my all-time favorite blush brush is the 08 brush from NYX. This brush is the bomb. So I just pick up a little bit of a little bit. I don't do the smile blush thing. I just, I just, 
I just put it on my cheek. I just start on the apple on my cheek and I kind of sweep it backwards. And if you're not crazy about blush, leave it at that. I like to blend it into my contour a little bit so there's no gap between. This is pretty, but I love blush. I love blush. So I go in for round two. And again, I just use little strokes. Kind of helps to keep it blended. And then once it's applied, use little circular motions. And I pretty much just bring it right above my contour. You don't have to do that. You can keep it on the apple. But like I said, I love blush. I also like to add it to the tip of my nose and over the top of my nose. I feel like it kind of ties it all together. Sometimes I even dust it over my forehead, a little bit everywhere. I remember my mom, when I was really little, telling me that you should always put a little bit of blush everywhere, and I think that was deeply engraved into my brain, so thanks, mom. And that is how you go from round to a diamond. I finished off my look with some freckles and some lipstick. This is the Fenty Beauty Matte Moiselle Lipstick in Saucy. And I just realized I match my background and my Atlee sweatshirt. If you guys have any questions or you struggle with certain aspects of cream contouring, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to haul it back when I can. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.